the idea of Tower of Babel came up with um, <laughs> when Steinar, uh, he called me and he was telling me about the project that four different companies, uh, Icelandic, Hungarian, Norwegian and Lithuanian theatre is going to work together to make a common project of interactive theatre for youth. It's really fun to do this very, very special world, this crazy world of uh, apocalyptic scenery in these very strange costumes. Wow, I love it. And the makeup and everything, that's fun. That's what I like very much. We had applied and uh, received money for the Participate in Your Life program. The network started there and uh, we should have this meeting here at the theatre to um, kind of decide what the frames of the project should be. What were uh, our aims and uh, what were the activities uh, we should uh, engage uh, the project in. And I remember we had some good meetings and a little workshop and um, started to talk about this, uh, our main topic, uh, the interactive and participating theater for young, per young persons. <laughs> we were so glad and engaged and, and um, eager to start after this meeting. Uh, I think that uh, to get a partner as the National Drama Theatre of Kaunas, it's a, a privilege for us to be cooperating with you uh, because uh, you have uh, so much knowledge and uh, professionality and uh, giving the frame, uh, the frameworks of the, of the project. Tower of Babel, like the myth. Uh, from the Bible, uh, that kind of stuck with me and I started thinking about that and I think the pretty fast, the idea of a concept consisting of four different tribes, uh, that the audience are entering into four different tribes and then meeting each other and then having this uh, language conflict, the conflict of not knowing who to trust or not came up quite soon. So that's what we've been developing together with the companies, me and Helena Andersson and Signe Gerda Landfalt, the costume and mask designer and set designer, have traveled Europe to meet those uh, companies, to learn more about their different methods of interactive theater for children and youth. And then the production and the story of the Tower and Bubble, Planet Earth, Game Over, Reset has been growing together with the companies. In general, I think that this is the biggest international production which we have ever had in uh, our theatre's history because uh, four countries are working together by building together and uh, we are very happy that Kaunas 2022 gave the first financial inspiration to yeah. start this project on 2020 and then it was supplemented by EEA grants and Erasmus Plus and that's why we have such kind of amazing possibility to create together and to represent to youth this extraordinary crazy and as Hilda told weird performance <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, so nice that uh, uh, all the official uh, authorities see the meaning of this project so I think it's uh, really exciting that so broad uh, specter of uh, funders actually see the meaning of this uh, yes. project did you were you scared Yes. You were uh, standing like this, like, ooh. <laughs> David has made some new changes in the sound. Okay. So that will be a surprise for you because I didn't play for you beforehand. <laughs> so you're welcome. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to, to direct this uh, production because <laughs> I've actually made a play. It's the total amount of play, I think it's three hours long but the audience will only see one hour, one and a half hour of the production because we made four separate scenes of 20 minutes each that will be played at once. So my, <laughs> my problem is that I'm kind of standing in the middle listening to four 
different uh, tribes going on at the same time. So uh, I have, I, I wish I could have two more ears <laughs> on either side of my head. And then you have to go up and take, so, so skip that arm in the beginning, yeah. Just, just there and then the head is the first thing that comes out. Maybe you have a weapon or something yeah. that you... <laughs> it's for a place, playing at the same time, but I can see them. I'm standing in the dark, listening, and trying to write down and make suggestions, and then this huge um, journey starts, and the, the, the sound technician, and the composer, and the light designer, everybody is standing outside of the truss of the box of bubble trying to listen how to do it so it's this totally weird experience of directing a play which you can't see <laughs> and you almost cannot hear it and um, but we will go into every room as well to direct it like this but it's my head is exploding and it's so frustrating and so much fun so if somebody actually are here they will probably you you still don't see them when you come up, no, no. and they will react yeah. with your movements. And there, there there might be people lying and standing and standing over there and trying to get out when you come up. For me, the most inter interesting part of this performance is the interactive parts. And we are not thinking the same about uh, interactivity. We are not using the same methods. So for me, that was the biggest challenge to put everybody's opinion and everybody's method uh, into this performance. But I think Hilda, the director, is so good in it. Uh, she's listening us, uh, get the information for uh, from everybody and asking and after that she decides which is the best way to do this performance. I think really the biggest challenge is to communicate in uh, another language than your own and you always have to uh, use your mind and think in different ways. Uh, so uh, four countries, different languages, but it's also amazing, but it's a challenge also. The first thing that comes to my mind is um, it maybe has to do with this idea of, of, of bringing in independent groups, many independent groups to work inside this, uh, this institutional context. I think it's, um, it's maybe sometimes difficult to navigate the actual, like what your actual role is supposed to be, uh, as in um, you're here, you're here as, a, as a performer uh, and then also you um, have to have opinions on, on what, on like really kind of found, foundational aspects of the work, like what it is about, like what questions we are asking. Now there's two weeks until we premiere and, and we are kind of still juggling uh, some big questions about what the work is really about. With the Tower of Babel I wanted to make a production for youth that sort of dives into a theme and a problematic that I believe and I know that a lot of youth today are worried about. They are deeply anxious about their future. They worry about the climate change. They see a, a future that's for them, for their life is unclear. Uh, and we are in the middle of this crisis of the climate breakdown, the clock is ticking and the doomsday is looming. So we go into this production with kind of a thought experiment of a, and a conceptual experiment. We are in four different worlds, post-apocalyptic worlds. Um, we are in a desert world, we are in a world that's covered in oil, we are in an ocean that's totally covered in plastics, and we are inside of a nuclear bunker after a nuclear accident. And uh, in this, inside of this, it's actually a black box uh, divided into four different rooms. Uh, the audience are divided in four different uh, groups tribes and are, they are becoming a part of that tribe 
and then on the last part they are confronted with big altar of planet Earth uh, because all of these four different worlds has a treasure that they are dependent on. Like in desert, it's the, the last seeds of the planet. Uh, in the oil world, it's the last clean water. In the water world, it's the last fire. And in the nuclear, it's the last clean soil. So the youth are asked to make a choice between human civilization or the planet Earth. Do they want to sacrifice human civilization to be able to restart the planet Earth? Or should we save human, human civilization uh, living in this kind of half-living state to be able to save us? I think we have to like uh, mess this up a bit. It's a, it's a very beautiful. It's too beautiful right Aww. now. So we have to like do something that makes it a bit more rough. How does that feel? Is it too much? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, great. Oh. Good, good. Maybe I need a bag for mm -hmm. that. Okay. You we make the the scarf. Yeah. And after that, it's just aging. Everything else is perfect. Yeah. If it if you think yeah, it fits it's good. Yeah, it's very comfortable. I really like it. Go yeah. see yourself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> So good. I love it, yeah. This project is, is vastly uh, successful, I would say. Oh, okay. um, I hope that we also uh, will find a way to broaden the network, to get in new and other uh, groups to participate in the, in the network and learn about these methods. Because I, I think that young people, which now are so engaged in, uh, in online activities, in gaming and, and uh, all these things and uh, social networks, mm. they like this interactive part where they also can take a part because they are used to doing it in all other uh, uh, online circumstances. So I think that um, we should try to make this uh, um, uh, project continue. And firstly, we will tour with uh, the performance that will be able in all the participating countries mm -hmm. and hopefully a lot of uh, European festivals that, uh, in, uh, in addition to that. So that is our first uh, aim. Mm -hmm.